Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I read Tom Delage's Chasing Shadows so you don't have to. I'm editing this vlog and I realized that I call Tom Delange, Tom Delange. Before you comment anything, give me a break. I'm French, okay? I pronounced it the French way. Please excuse me. Um, I know it's Tom Delange. It's just like within my vernacular to pronounce the G-E as a J, okay? So please, before you come attack me, just know that I know, okay? We're on the same page. I'm also embarrassed by myself. So usually when people do these types of like, I read this so you didn't have to um, type of series and vlogs and stuff like that, they're reading like new releases by celebrities. But I thought to myself, no, I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna read a 2016 release by one of the most unhinged men in the world that I absolutely love. First of all, let's um, talk about how much I love Tom Delage. I discovered Blink-182 when I was a wee little 10 year old. Um, I went to HMV, which was the music store that we had here in Canada, um, RAP. And I walked in with my dad and my dad was probably picking up like a new ACDC CD or U2 or whatever he was doing. And I was like, I'm gonna be different. I'm not gonna be like my parents. Um, and I went to the punk section of HMV and I was gonna pick up an album and I saw this really cool album cover uh, from Blink-182 and it said parental authority advised and I was like mm -hmm. swearing I'm cool I'm different I'm not like other 10 year olds so I begged my dad to pick it up we listened to it in the car and you know <laughs> one of the memories I have with my dad of listening to this album is that like he clearly knew there was gonna be swearing in this album um and i was like reading along to the lyrics while the songs were playing and every time there was a swear word i would talk really fast and loud so that my dad wouldn't hear the swear word and return the album <laughs> so that was my first um introduction into blink 82 um and i fell in love with the band i have been a major major blink 82 fan for like 20 years tom delange if you follow with the blink 182 ethos is a very um contingent figure within the band he has often left the band has broken up due to tom delange and mark hoppus not getting along then they get back together we're all excited we go to the concerts la da da and then they break up again they got back together recently and you bet your fucking ass I bought tickets to go to the concert. I will support every downfall and uprising that this band has. So I will be going to Blink-182 in May. And because I was going to Blink-182 in May, I was like, you know what? Let me like rekindle my love with Tom Delage, this unhinged figure in my life. He has paved so many moments of my life for me. So I decided, let me read some of the books because I know he has books. And because I have a booktube channel, I'm like, maybe I can do something. With this. Something else that you need to know about Tom Delage or something that me and Tom Delage have in common is we, you, you know, me and Tom, me and the besties, we are major alien conspiracy theorists. This might be the most unhinged thing I've ever said on this channel, but I 100% believe in aliens and there is not a chance in this universe, you cannot argue with me at all, that they don't exist, that they have not been here, that they're not here already, like nothing. You cannot tell me otherwise. And you also, you know who else you can't tell otherwise? Tom Delage. <laughs> and if you've read anything that he's ever said or listen to anything he's ever said about aliens, you know that he, the belief that he has is way surpassing anybody else's beliefs in the world. So Secret Machines, from what I understand, is a sci-fi book, but it is based on real conversations that Tom DeLonge has had with government officials and like people who've seen aliens. And he's kind of collected all of this data together into a fictionalized book, which I believe is actually written by AJ Hartley, who is the other author um, in this, but all of the like stories. And I think, I guess the plot is probably written by Tom DeLonge. So while I was at the gym today, um, all I listened to was Tom's like opening statements and his foreword um and it basically goes into how tom delange met with people and he was like hey like i believe in aliens and he spoke to someone who he refers to as the boss man i don't know who that is um and he gathered this data <laughs> it's so unhinged the first book in the multimedia secret machines franchise that will reveal fascinating secrets surrounding the true well-documented events of unidentified aerial phenomenon in a powerful collaboration with top government advisors featuring actual events and other truths drawn from sources within the military and intelligence community tom delange and ag hartley offer a tale at once terrifying fantastical and perhaps too real though it is of course a work of fiction and it has a little question mark 
I don't know what I'm doing, um, but I do want to mark this moment in my Blink-182 little fangirl heart and read this for you all so that you have to or don't have to. I don't even know. This will be marking something for me. And this is for 10 year old me. It's not for anybody else. Um, if you don't like this vlog, it's not for you. It's for 10 year old me. So let's get into it. Hello, so I got about 100 pages into Chasing Shadows and I wanted to do a quick update because I'm 100 pages in and I feel like we've met all the major characters that will make an appearance in the book. So, so far, um, I think I had said like, is this non-fiction or is it fiction? It's definitely fiction. Um, I think even alien sightings, whether they are true or not, would still be classified as fiction even today. Tom Delange and E.G. Hartley, it seems that they have created a fictional narrative based on probably stories that they've heard. It's very obvious that it's a conglomerate of multiple things. So there are multiple stories going on at once and two of them are related so far together that we see that's apparent. So the first character we met is Alan. Alan is a soldier and very stereotypically to um alien narratives he saw his alien or the aliens that he saw were when he was at or fighting for the US. He's a typical like fighter flyer soldier, um, government operative who sees an alien on a mission. Basically he's in a plane um, ready to attack the enemy and then obviously his weapon system goes down um, and he's sort of being accused of treachery or treason um, because he didn't shoot right at the enemies and because he didn't stop whatever was happening um three other soldiers died um and so obviously he's dealing with treason then we have this character named jennifer who seems to be a rich girl very privileged girl but who uses her privilege or her father's money um to work in underdeveloped countries her father recently unalived himself however we learn that her dad unalived himself based on a request from this mysterious being. It's painted in the sense that it's a person right now, but it's definitely giving off the idea that the father says like, these people know everything. And so obviously there's something mysterious there, definitely probably alien related. We don't know what her father did to make this money um, and because of his death Jennifer is receiving all of his assets. So I think Jennifer will soon discover like what her father was doing and I have a pretty solid idea that is probably involved with aliens. Um, then we meet a character named Tamika and Tamika is an investigative journalist that works to debunk these theories, um, conspiracy theories, things like Sasquatches and stuff like that. She receives this mysterious tape and then is hunted down because she got this tape. This is where two storylines enter side because the tape is from a man named Jersey and what we learned is that Jersey was in the Holocaust and he was part of the prisoners that worked in the camps but his specific camp what they did is that they were working with this new technology this very advanced technology so obviously what we're going to see here is some sort of relation between those two Tamika right now is being not hunted necessarily but she's definitely being watched um because she's going to have this tape and obviously know something of German intelligence or out of the world intelligence. So that's where we are right now. I'm definitely going to continue reading. I am way more intrigued by this than I originally thought I would be. I think that it's just enough hard sci-fi to feel realistic and place you in our world just by understanding these technological advancements as being something out of the ordinary while also having easy writing that it's not the hardest of sci-fi's that i've ever read so i will continue reading this tonight i don't know how far along i'll get into um but i will definitely be reading it while watching tv one eternity later good morning so i haven't really updated in a while but that's also because i haven't read secret machines in a while so i am drinking my morning espresso um it is 10 30 but you know sometimes we're just exhausted um which is me all the time but basically today i am working on editing my february wrap-up which will be going before this video so go check it if you haven't watched it. I am just starting off the day because I know today I'm going to be focusing on editing this video and reading Secret Machines. I am about halfway now. Um, there have been additions to the characters, but not in a way that they are the main characters of the novel. They are just like kind of case files um, and written in a different font to resemble case files of different scenarios where people have seen 
unidentified flying objects. Particularly one character is tied to Tamika's chapter and Jersey's chapter because she is part of the paperclip program. And what I think is really interesting is that we are getting knowledge of US government projects that have happened. There is proof that this occurred. And Operation Paperclip is one of those things that we know happened. Basically, if you aren't aware what Operation Paperclip is, it is the US government um, hiring Nazi German um, scientists and engineers and stuff like that to come work for the government and advance science and technology in the United States. And this occurred obviously after World War II, when Nazis were criminalized. <laughs> Rightly so. I guess Tom Delage is making the argument that Operation Paperclip and the secrecy of that aspect of the government was also tied with scientific advancements in UFOs. And while we are knowledgeable and aware of Operation Paperclip historically, what actually happened or other aspects of what happened in scientific discoveries is still secret because it involves aliens. I hope I explained that correctly. I hope it made sense, but I am planning to go to the gym on my lunch break. So I do want to take you with me. It is leg day. I did do yoga yesterday, so my legs are a little bit in pain, but we will prevail. I will take you with me. I'll try to film like a little bit, but it is quite embarrassing <laughs> to film. So we'll see. Um, otherwise, we'll see you later, hopefully with an update with Secret Machines. Let's get on with the day. Hello, so I haven't spoken to you guys in quite a number of days, but I did want to talk about where I am in Secret Machines um, because there's some interesting discussions that are happening. So I am on page 430. Um, I still have quite a bit of reading to do before I would finish the book. So there's a lot of discussions about um, World War II in this a lot. A lot of discussions on secret projects that were going on with the Nazis at the same time as other revelations that are happening. And the aliens are kind of this thread that links all of these stories together in a way. And what is interesting is that I was actually having this discussion yesterday with one of my coworkers, how aliens, believing in aliens is something that I think a lot of people do believe, or maybe just my my, my turn of the crop, I don't know. Um, but if you believe in aliens and if you believe that there is this grand governmental conspiracy to hide aliens, why would it be so far-fetched that other things are occurring within the government that we don't know? And I think that that's really interesting. I'm not like getting into a whole like conspiracy theory, but I think that that maybe the running theme behind this book where Operation Paperclip um, was something that was proven. It was a conspiracy that the Nazis were working for the US government um, to help them with advancements in technology and that turned out to be true. So why would it be so far-fetched that um, aliens don't exist when there are a lot of conspiracies, a lot of talk around them existing? Um, so I think that's really interesting, um, but that is the main theme going throughout the book. And I think the characters are each individually painting this narrative. Um, so Alan is definitely that soldier um, who is exposed to a lot of alien technology, but still at the same time just believes that this is a government operative and that it's not necessarily alien technology. It's more like advanced technology that the government specifically has. So even though he's seen phenomena, he still finds a more logical and military basis for his ideas. Jennifer, who is the daughter of a very, very, very rich man who we discover was donating a lot of money to countries. Um, I think we're being led to believe that it was for military purposes. However, there is this underlying idea that it's funding something that we don't know. So we have Jennifer's perspective of the rich um, and how they are kind of involved within this. We have Tamika, who is the conspiracy um, debunker in a way. So she is trying to uncover the, the underlying truth and investigating that aspect and then we have Jersey who is very much working for the government during World War II and as we know World War II seems to be this tie-in with alien advancement in technology and conspiracy so all of this 
together is um not mind-blowing but like i'm trying to like pin it all together i really feel like an investigator um so i'm very interested to finish this and i think while i don't think the writing is the most lyrical i don't think the writing is up to what I like. Um, within science fiction, I think the writing is pretty solid. I'm engaged enough that I'm interested in reading on. And I think the overall plot and messages that the novel is conveying are interesting enough and keeping me engaged to read to the end. So hopefully I will be able to finish this either today or tomorrow. That's my goal. I am behind on like my reading this month, but I am like I said, very engaged and I will keep you updated. I'm probably gonna go to the gym on my lunch break. Maybe I'll film it, but the last thing I filmed was me at the gym in this top. So I don't know if it'll be the most interesting. I will see you guys later. Hello, welcome to my bathroom. Um, I decided I'm going to end the vlog here, but while I'm telling you about my final feelings of secret machines chasing sap, <laughs> secret machines chasing sap, <laughs> oh my gosh, secret machines chasing, <laughs> what is happening? Secret machines chasing shadows Number one by Tom DeLonge and A.G. Hartley. Get all my feelings on that. I just got these like hydrochloid um, face patches and basically my skin. So I have oily T-zone, oily here and oily here. Everything else is dry. So I'm, I kind of want to see if like stuff will be pulled out of my pores. I just bought this thing on TikTok, like a lot of people like getting gunk out of their face. And that's what I want. So while we talk about... Tom Delage's first book, and if you should read it, I will be putting this on my face. So it kind of looks like this, like a pretty normal pimple patch type of thing. So, basically, you all must be wondering, like, what are my opinions on this book? Because I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog that I am a huge Blink-182, Tom Delage, Angels and Airwaves, Stan 5000, right? People did this whole thing. Did they put it over their eyebrows? Ah, my hair. So we already know that I'm a huge Tom Delonge, DeLong fan, and I really, really, really like love everything that Tom Delonge has put out. I think he's a really great artist, and I think that that's like kind of apparent through this book. Like you could definitely tell that this is a passion project for him. But this book took me so long to complete. And while it did take me a really, really, really long time to complete, I can't say that I didn't enjoy the experience. We'll put the easier ones on first. This is the chin one. Where does it go upside down? Put this. The novel is focusing on like true stories that Tom Delange and A.G. Hartley have collected over the years and they've compiled it into like a sci-fi thriller fiction novel. And obviously, like I mentioned before, it follows four seemingly like unconnected narratives. And the one common thread, at least in the beginning, is that they are all connected through viewing airborne unidentified flying object phenomena. But I finished this book like almost ugh, at least four hours at this point and I have been seriously debating how I feel about the novel. I was like super engaged with the book whenever I was reading it. Like as soon as I picked it up, I would smash out like 100, 150 pages. I would finish it right away. Those moments when I put it down, it did take a lot out of me to pick the book back up again. Part of this was due to two specific main characters that we follow. Both of them are very much like government, soldier, wartime soldier perspectives that I feel like in an alien narrative, those types of stories feel a little not dated to me, but definitely not original. Like it's definitely something that we've seen before. It's a trope in alien narratives that I'm quite comfortable with. And I almost want to say that like, if you're comfortable in alien narratives, like you can pretty much identify how the story would end with this like Area 51 type of narrative. If you're not, then I think the themes of like governments hiding stuff with soldiers would probably be an interesting take and definitely like of the thriller nature. But for me, it just, like I said, felt repetitive. It felt like things I've seen before in the alien genre. So it wasn't 
anything new to me. But the other two characters, um, the two girls, Tamika and Jennifer, their perspectives were actually really interesting because they were kind of showing aspects of alien sci-fi thrillers that you don't really see that often. And right now I feel like I look, this is gonna give me a wrinkle. Their storylines always felt creepy to me. Um, I definitely feel creepy right now, um, but their stories always felt creepy to me. And I was genuinely like thrilled while reading it. And I think that that was what was intended for this book in like all perspectives. I did, however, like I mentioned, enjoy the tie of alien lore with like governmental science and soldiers, like religious themes, which I thought were really interesting. Also, I started to feel like really clever when I started piecing things together, things that related to like religious ideologies, things that related to things in history that relate to aliens and like World War II events um, that have been hidden per se. Overall, I think the book was really enjoyable, but there were definitely some like slumpy parts um, and definitely some chapters that were a slog to get through. Would I suggest you read this? Do I suggest reading Tom Delange's book? I think this is really for people who have a love for Tom Delange. I don't see this as, like I mentioned, any different from other alien sci-fi thrillery books that are out on the market. And while Tom Delange um, has this whole foreword in the book where he's discussing, this is like true events or things that he's compiled over time, it's not implying anything that I think if you follow like alien conspiracy theories is different from what we know. I think the writing was solid. I mentioned that a couple of times in the vlog. So I think if you're just looking to go in and read like a fun alien thriller and you don't really want to think too much about it, this book is pretty well written and it's pretty enjoyable to read. Every chapter ends on kind of a cliffhanger and you're meant to like read the other chapters and be excited to get back to each of the cliffhangers. So I thought that that was really well plotted. But I still stand by my fact that I don't think it's more original than any other alien sci-fi. Um, and I hate to say that because obviously <laughs> I love Tom DeLonge, but I definitely think like this is for Tom DeLonge, Tom DeLong fans. I keep like mispronouncing his name because like I come from a French speaking area of Canada and um, my whole life I mispronounced it, I guess, because I read it in a French way. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is just for fans. Um, I don't think someone can pick this up and get anything different out of it about alien lore. So I ended up giving this a 3.5 stars. It definitely is enjoyable, just I don't think it's for everybody. And that's it. Now that I have this stuff on, I feel really weird. But that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you watched it till the end, thank you so much and please leave the little alien emoji in the comments if you got to this point just so I know you're a real one. Let me know down below in the comments also if you've read this book. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What are your thoughts on it? Please let me know down below. Also if you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias, I do leave a link down below to my Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram if you would like to follow me there. And of course because it is the end of the vlog, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. I tell you every time that it does wonders for my channel and it makes me feel really good. Um. But that's it. I don't know how to end these things, so I will see you next time. Okay, bye!